Hello everyone, uh, it's me, Steven, and uh, today I would like to talk about something that's uh, been on my mind over the co past couple months. Of course, I always talk about things that are on my mind, that's kind of my style. Um, anyway, uh, but this has to do with Sekiro and why, in my opinion, why it's okay uh, that there is no multiplayer or online component uh, that we know of. Of course, it has been confirmed. There is definitely no PvP and definitely no co-op. Um, and so I'm just kind of going to break down why that's okay, given the kind of game that Sekiro is. Um, because I know that a lot of uh, Soulsborne fans, a lot of FromSoft fans, um, that's kind of the main draw for them. So... When we're looking at multiplayer in FromSoft games, um, there are kind of three aspects to, uh, to take into account. Uh, there's lore, uh, there's gameplay, and then there's development. So, to understand why multiplayer would not work in Sekiro, uh, we first have to kind of understand why it did work in FromSoft's previous games, in the Soulsborne games, and then look at how, how Sekiro is going to be different from, from those titles. Uh, so, uh, let's look at lore first. So, um, of course, lore is really important in any From Software game because, you know, Miyazaki and really the whole, you know, their, their, their whole team, they're, they're storytellers first. And that's what's important. Um, they're, you know, they're storytellers and they're artists first. And the the games and everything with that, that kind of comes second. Um, and really, that's what that makes their games great. Um, that's what separates a Dark Souls game from a Dark Souls clone, is that a Dark Souls game, or Bloodborne, has so much time and effort devoted to the nuances, to the little details within... Uh, within the story and within the lore and how the story and the lore interact with the gameplay and how the story and the lore affect the player through the gameplay. Whereas with the Dark Souls clone, it's just gameplay. All right, so uh, with that said, uh, let's, let's talk about why multiplayer works within the Soulsborne games. So uh, first off is that all of the Soulsborne games, all of their lore deal with layered reality in some form or fashion. Um, in Dark Souls, the cycle of light and dark um, affects not just the physical world, uh, but also space and time themselves. Uh, it is canon within that world that there are many parallel timelines. In fact, I think it's in, I'm pretty sure it's in Dark Souls 3, uh, it might be also in one as well, that you can actually enter the timeline of one of the NPCs as an invader and kill them. It makes sense that you could join another person's world because you know, there are multiple timelines. And so because there are multiple timelines, timelines, of course there would be ways to to bridge the gaps, you know? So... That's Dark Souls. Multiplayer makes even more sense in Bloodborne because the story hinges heavily upon the layered nature of the world's, rea world's reality. It's not just the, the insight mechanic and how that plays into the world, but also the bells. The, the summoning bells were created by the Thumerians in order to... Uh, access the planes of reality on which uh, the Great Ones operated. Um, and there are multiple enemies within the game, most notably the bell-ringing women, who use the bells, the same kinds of bells, the same kinds of summoning bells that you use to summon in cooperators or to invade, they use those same bells to summon in other things. You know, I mean, for Pete's sake, the one reborn is a summon. So in that sense, it would kind of, it would almost be weird if Bloodborne didn't have multiplayer. 
Additionally, layered reality manifests heavily within the death mechanics of the games, uh, and how areas reset after you die. So, uh, additionally, the Soulsborne games uh, have primarily lore-based narratives. Um, they tell the story of a world, not a character, and, and not the actions of a character or certain groups of characters. Um, so, because their narratives and their themes are primarily lore-based, um, then it allows for looseness within the finer details of the plots and narratives. Because the narrative and the world in Soulsborne games are almost indistinguishable from one another, then it doesn't quite so much matter who your character is. He can be your own avatar, because in the grand scheme of the plot, he's relatively insignificant. Now, let's look at Sekiro. Sekiro, on the other hand, does not use... It, it, it doesn't have any sort of layered reality uh, within the lore that we know of. It takes place within a specific time, in a specific place, and it has a definite, you know, the action of the story has a definite beginning and end. It's not like in Dark Souls where you reach the end of the game and you either kindle the flame or you let it die, but ultimately the cycle's going to repeat itself. It's not like in Bloodborne where the night ends and you either wake up, become the host of the dream, or, or you know, you become a great one, but ultimately there's going to be another night, you know? And so it's never quite done. With Sekiro, it starts when you when you lose your, your charge and presumably would end when you get him back or, or when the uh, shinobi fails or, you know, it has a definite beginning and an end. And there's a definite purpose and there's a, a, a definite uh, goal that your character is striving towards. Um, and because Sekiro uh, appears to have more of a plot or a character-driven narrative, uh, there's far less leeway um, as far as the characters in the world are concerned. It wouldn't make sense within the world's narrative for you to summon in another shinobi to help you fight because the Child Lord only has one shinobi. How, how, how are you able to clone yourself and somehow... It, it just it doesn't make very much sense. Kind of how co-op in, in Neo doesn't make very much sense. It's like you're literally summoning in, summoning in another version of yourself. What? So that's that's why it wouldn't really work so much within within the lore of of the game. And you know, because from software's games are so lore driven and 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 every little detail has its purpose that one little hole within the lore that it it would be bad and people would certainly notice okay so gameplay wise and I, i'm gonna try and finish this up quickly here as far as gameplay it, within the soulsborne games and how multiplayer fits into that let's be honest with ourselves guys from software is not very good at making pvp work only one out of the five games they have made within the past decade actually has, you know, competently functioning PvP, and the rest of that game sucked. I'm talking about Dark Souls 2, of course. Multiplayer within the Soulsborne games is fun because the Soulsborne games are fun. However, if you just take that multiplayer on its own and really look at it, you'll start to realize that it's not great. Would you play an online PvP game if that game was Souls-like? Would you play a version of Bloodborne that was only online PvP? I wouldn't. Additionally, Soulsborne games are action RPGs, uh, whereas Sekiro is a stealth slash action game. Um, and given the focus of the gameplay, 
PvP and co-op, it just wouldn't work. And co-op would have the potential to just trivialize everything. Because you would have two people going into a stealth situation rather than just one. Um, and if, it, if the stealth situation was balanced for two people, then it would be virtually impossible for just one person. So the, the question of balance brings us to development concerns. Um, and the first is the trivialization of challenges. So Soulsborne games generally take place on a flat two-dimensional plane, right? You know, it's the ground. You know, there's, as far as combat is concerned, you can really only be on the ground, generally speaking. Um, and think of all the exploits and AI tricks that multiplayer, specifically co-op, allows you in a Dark Souls game. Then add in the facts that most enemies in Sekiro are still earthbound, from what we've, from what we've seen, and B, you are no longer earthbound. You can jump, you can uh, zip away on your hookshot, you can do any manner of things to use the three-dimensional plane. Then add in another person. That is a recipe for trivialization. It would destroy the game's challenge, and I think it would make it unfun. And if it didn't destroy the game's challenge, it would at the very least make it incredibly difficult um, and expensive to try and design and balance. So next, we all know this, every From Software game, with the exception of Dark Souls 2, has serious balance problems when it comes to multiplayer, uh, whether that be co-op or PvP. Dark Souls 3 and Bloodborne, I'm looking at you. So without co-op or PvP, the devs wouldn't have to worry so much about balancing. Um, and this is very important because there's so many new mechanics that they are putting into Sekiro. And so the balancing would be even more difficult because the devs aren't as familiar with the systems that they're working with. It really allows, it allows them to focus on more important aspects of the game. You know, tone, balancing for one person, the action mechanics and that sort of thing. If, if Sekiro turns into a franchise rather than just a one-off, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw it in the next installation. Um, but for the first game, it really doesn't make much sense. All right, so that's my thought. Those are my thoughts. Um, don't forget to subscribe and uh, stay tuned for more Sekiro content. Uh, one last thing is uh, there's something I've been thinking about, and that is my video quality. Right now, I'm recording my videos on my phone uh, in my dorm room, which the audio is not as good as it could be. Um, and so I just want to ask you guys, um, you know, what do you think about the quality of these face videos that I make? And uh, if, you know, if you guys like the general format that I have right now, uh, or if you would prefer that I uh, do something uh, a little bit more refined, you know, get a, an actual recording mic, get an actual uh, video camera, that sort of thing. Um, so tell me what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time.